All right. So today's um, guest speakers for our employer readiness section of our virtual work-based learning series are from um, the Department of Developmental Disabilities for Ohio. Um, we have Ann Tapia with us and Keith Banner and then um, Vanessa Elliott. I'm gonna add Vanessa's information to the slide deck before I send it out to you. But Vanessa, um, I'm gonna let them introduce themselves and tell you um, what um, they do for their organizations, all right? So um, Keith uh, and Vanessa, go ahead and take it away. I guess I'll start and then I'll um, let you know who I am. I'm Keith Banner and I actually am from Cincinnati, but I work for the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities and Community Life Engagement, which also includes the Employment First Initiative, which basically I think everybody has a pretty good handle on. We've been doing it for over 10 years. And back in the day, I used to be in Butler County, I used to be the Employment Services Manager and I, do, I did a lot of employment and engage, employer engagement so I have a little bit of a of a, a good feel for um, the subject matter today. So I don't know, Ann, did, can, do you want to, I know that your voice is like, I could introduce you, but I, I want to make sure you, if you want to, you can. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I have no voice. I'm going to take a back seat today and let Keith and Vanessa um, be the stars of the show. I'll reshare in a second. I realized it wasn't sharing the way I wanted it to. Um, but I am the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities Project Manager for Southwest Ohio, working with Keith at DODD. Vanessa, you want to go? Thank you, Anne. My name is Vanessa Elliott and I'm a vocational rehabilitation supervisor with opportunities for Ohioans with disabilities. Um, I have been in Hamilton County for the past three and a half years, but I have recently moved over to Butler County. So I'm doing the reverse of Keith. <laughs> um, happy to be here with you guys today and give you some resources. Okay, you want me to start, Vanessa? Is that showing it in presentation mode? Okay. No, it's still, it's still got the um, side on it, but either way is good. It's split screens. All right, I'm gonna keep playing with it, but go ahead. Well, I'm like Vanessa said, we've got a, um, a deck of slides with a lot of resources and ideas around um, supporting people through an employment planning pro process with an emphasis on discovery, um, connecting the interest you discover to job possibilities, the big big topic that we're thinking about engaging businesses, helping to build skills, and then tapping into um, supports and strategies in the community. So um, again, I, I feel like I'm talking too much already, Vanessa. Do you want to take this one? <laughs> uh, we'll definitely be splitting up. But um, so I'll, basically, some ahead, some sorry. takeaway. What's that? As it go ahead. Sorry, I'm going to mute. Um, our resources and ideas on how to best organize and communicate all the important information. So we all know it, it takes a whole team effort. It's multiple agencies. It's the family. It's sometimes other outside support services. So we just want you to be able to have um, a full scope of services that are available to you as, we, as you move forward with working with families and students. There you go. It's in presentation mode now, perfect. Um, I Like I said up top, um, Employment First has been around for over um, 11 years now. It got signed into as an executive order by the, and the then governor, John Kasich. So we have a beautiful website that you can link to on this slide when you get the slide deck that walks you through a bunch of resources in, uh, around transition and employer engagement, but um, 11 years and counting now. And basically, the the, pro, the whole idea behind employment first is a is a philosophy that that it's really if if the person wants to work and um, really is trying to pursue that, we want to make that sure that that's the first option for anybody with um, developmental disabilities to be able to pursue um, what they want to uh, what job they want to have. It's not about employment only. Um, but that employment services become a first option for folks. So not a program, but a philosophy, a way to proceed in a way to plan and um, provide services where the conversation is about not 
Um, do you want a job, but where would you like to work? What are your interests? How can we help you figure this out with the services that we authorize? And I, I, I skipped ahead already. Um, <laughs> I got, I've got you, I've got you, Keith. Cool, cool. Um, so that's pretty much the reason we're wanting to ask those open-ended questions is to make sure that people are starting to get that, that idea in mind that, you know, it's not, can I work or can I not work? It's what do I want to do? We do that with, we do that with any individual, with any child. Hey, what are you going to do for your future? What does that look like to you? We just want to make sure that they're getting that same, that same concept in mind that it's, there is a, a full path ahead of you. Um, and next slide. And I think we can all relate to this. This is where we all start out. Start out with number four. I don't think I want to work. You know, I want to hang out with mom and dad. You know, I'll, I'll live with them. They'll take care of everything, right? I don't, I don't know enough about it. We all start there. Um, but as we, as we progress, as we age, people start thinking, okay, well, you know, you have to work, right? You have to pay bills. You have to have that social that social interaction. And so we're looking at that from the same, same way with all of our students. Hey, what do you want to do? How do we, how do we get there? What are you going to need to be successful? And with our individuals with more significant needs, that means we need to do increased planning. And in order to be proactive, it needs to start earlier. Um, I think that that's something that's happened um, more recently where we're like, okay, if we can get to them when they're 13, 14 years old, at least, then they're prepared to kind of start thinking about those things. Yeah, I want a job. What does that job look like for me? What are, what's my skill set right now? What, what do I need to work on and improve on? Um, and so that keeps us, if we can start early, that keeps us from being reactive. Oh my goodness. It's their final year. It's, it's, you know, April and they're graduating in June. And what do we do? That's not pleasant for the student. It's not pleasant for the family. It creates a lot of unnecessary stress that we can kind of look at if we start earlier, make those plans. Cause we all know just like that map on the, on the screen, it, it can be a detour. You know, sometimes we might get a little lost. We got to self-correct, you know, and, and that just helps if we have that time to plan. And for this, uh, Mason's Path to Employment, basically this is a, a video of where they had some time to plan, they made some adjustments and they were able to get him what he needed so that he could um, do a job that he loved and kind of work through that piece. It's been one of those it. things where I just want to prove myself to somebody. Yeah. Just to show them I can do this and I'm not way beyond the canes and stuff like that. Or I just kind of maintain the grounds. I, I cut grass, I move logs with the bobcat, just kind of keep things tidy around here. Support giving uh, Mason opportunity. So we got together, right, and talked about how can we make that happen, pick the people with the family and say, how can we make this happen? And it, from there, it was just Mason's show. You know, we created a few opportunities. Chase said, hey, I'll give you a try. Probably when a lot of people would. We brought Mason on and we started off pretty conservative. Once we kind of got some ground rules set there, uh, I backed off like I do with most of my workers and kind of let them develop. Uh, um, I think that, that people should have the ability to find their strengths in niches and, and, and really exploit them to the best of their ability. What you see it may not look safe, but hey, I get in the machine and I'm able to get my work done. Probably has the best attitude of any employee that I have. I've never had one bit of complaint or, or issue with what I've asked him to do. He gets it done one way or another. And, and if he doesn't, it's because I didn't fill his machine up with gas. Yeah, just you know, a mixture of everything from experience to friendships with coworkers. It's it's just been great. I was able to prove to myself that I was able to operate those safely.
So as you saw there with, with some planning, with a, a group effort towards making sure that what he needed was in place, he was able to successfully do what he wanted to do. And it wasn't really so much about barriers as potential and what, what he could do with just a little bit of support one way or another. Um, and so resources are key to that. I wanted to say real quick, Vanessa, that, that story is great because you also um, kind of can understand business engagement through it, even though it's at the periphery. Like they, um, Eric is somebody in Hamilton County, I know that's kind of really good at building relationships in the community. And he kind of, I think, set up the whole situation for this guy. And basically he knew the guy's interest. So he kind of um, developed a relationship with a company that might be able to kind of help him figure out whether or not he can do the job. And that's really the one of the aspects of um, trying to engage with employers is you're, you're looking at the interest of the people that you're supporting, but you're also looking at possibly the interest of the of the business and what needs they have. And once that makes a match, then you can be not only a, a person that's supporting, the, a person with a disability you can also be the person that's supporting the business. And that's really the way you try to figure out um, engaging with businesses and working for um, the, your students or for, or for your job seekers is trying to figure out how can I help serve the business just as much as I'm serving the person that I'm, I'm trying to match um, for a job? So, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit too with some, some other slides, but I wanted to get that in real quick. So, Vanessa, take it away. Awesome. Thank you. And then, Anne, next slide, please. So, a lot of you are familiar with some of these things, so we'll go through it pretty quickly, but um, oodworks.com. That's just one way that we can take a referral. So if you if you have a student 14 or older that's ready for that, that's one way. And referrals can be made by anybody involved with the student um, to include the student themselves. So just know that there's a lot of different options for that. If you work um, at a school, there's very good chance that there is a counselor that is assigned to that school. Um, I'm always happy uh, to help if there's a question about who is your counselor, where should I go? Um, I'm available regardless of what county, what district, um, I'm happy to help. Okay. Next slide. So some of the services that we have for students, and this is not exclusive, it's not all inclusive, it's, it's just a small um, grouping of what we do um, for the majority. Um, so you have your pre-employment transition services, if you've heard pre um, quite a bit. Um, those are the different subsections that we, we provide um, through our, our different vendors. Um, and really, this is about that exploration piece. So we talked about, you know, getting students to the point where they're like, what do I want to do? What can I do? Where do I go from here? How do I, how do I advocate for what I want to do? Um, and that's where that pre-employment transition services, that's where those groups really come in to help with that and so that they can get a sense of what they wanna do and how to advocate for it. Um, bridge support services, we recognize that not every student's gonna have a, a super strong and supportive um, system around them. It happens. Um, these services are in place so that there is somebody there that can take them to go do things like open up a, a savings and checkings account, um, get their ID, because those are things that maybe they need to be able to address the barrier and move on and be able to do that next step. Um, help with filling out financial aid forms. Those are all things that when you don't necessarily have the supports in place, it might be difficult and it might be a, a barrier that you can't get past on your own. So we're happy to provide that service for individuals. And then of course, summer youth work experience up to five weeks, up to 20 hours per week. It's really, it's a way to dip your toe in the pool without taking like cannonball effect in the pool. So um, just making sure that they have a, a small group that they're working with and that they're trying things out. Was, was this something that I was interested? Is this something I would never want to do? Because um, sometimes liking a job and not liking a job, those are good things to know. If you've never done it, how will you know? So um, we, we put those in place for our transition um, students. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is with these supports, it's always supplemental to school um, services. We're not trying to supplant. We're not trying to take over what the school would do. We're trying to help make it a, a bridge. Um, and provide wraparound type services. Next slide, please. 
And we also recognize that sometimes the individual may not be ready to go out into the workforce upon exiting school. It's okay. Um, if they do end up um, going to a day half type program, vocab, then we have somebody that will work with them and continue to check in with them um, annually to make sure that they're aware that, you know, working in the community is still an option. How's everything going? Here, here's where you're able to, you know, kind of see the progression and that it's okay if you needed some additional time. Um, not everybody's ready for the same thing at the same time. And, and we're aware of that. And we want to make sure that that doesn't mean that they think it's not an option later down the line. It's a now or never thing. That's not the case. Um, so we want to support that. Next slide. Uh, just some adult services, obviously, searching for the job. We all know that, you know, just because you get a job doesn't mean you know all the tasks ahead of time. They might need some additional support. So we have people um, that come in and do that, the job coaches. Bridge support services, same concept with the transition service or the transition students and the adults. Sometimes you just don't have those supports in place. So we have we have some bridge support services to make sure that they have the ability to get some of those barriers knocked out of the way so that they can work and focus on that. Um, and then rehabilitation and assistive technology goes from low to high tech. So we we can do some pretty amazing things. Um, it, it just it depends on what that individual's needs are. And it's always based off that individual need. So I think um, it happens more with uh, transition youth than it does with adults. But um, just because one student got XYZ doesn't mean the other student's gonna get XYZ. It's, it's all case by case just to see where, where they're at and what they need. And then employer engagement, no matter how many services we may have, no matter how early we start our planning as a team and with the family engaged and everything else, we still need to rely on the employers because ultimately they're the ones that also have that buy-in and they're going to be the ones doing the hiring. So we've recognized that they're a, a key part to our, to our ability to expand a program and to make it so successful for our individuals to be able to keep their jobs um, and, and advance. And with that in mind, um, Ohio Means Jobs has a page set up for, for um, employers to be able to kind of look at what incentives are available, what supports are available, um, because they're also running a business and they may want to be supportive, but they still need to be able to, to keep that going. Um, for us on the OOD side, we have a department for that. Um, they do things like run the inclusive toolkit. Here's how you can make your workplace more accessible, more welcoming um, to individuals with disabilities. Also disability etiquette training. Let's talk about what does that look like? What would be something that's disrespectful or isn't really um, helping to move the environment in a productive way? And we also have, um, the employer partner list. So we have a lot of people that we've entered into agreements with. You'll give our, 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 you know, our participants a second glance. You'll, you'll talk to them again to make sure that we're not missing something there. Um, we know not everybody does well in verbal interviews. So employers might be able to kind of work through that and, and see how that they, how they can meet the individual where they're at and get a fantastic employee at the same time. Next slide. And then employer engagement. So we're not going to go through the video because I think it's what, like 40 something minutes long. So, um, but no, it's a great video that kind of shows that business, business engagement piece and relationship management because it really is all about relationships with these employers and, and being able to have that give and take relationship with them. Um, and then also um, hyperlinks for um, various incentives to include the tax incentives. Um, I wanted to real step in on this one for real quick, Vanessa, because um, this this um, um, pro project out of Cuyahoga County is great. If you get a chance, you can look at the video. They basically have a whole department at the county board that is focused on like what I was talking about earlier, developing relationships with business and being a service to businesses, just as you're a service to job seekers or people with developmental disabilities who are interested in working. 
and they kind of go out into the community and just kind of um, try to find businesses that would be um, that have needs that they could kind of match up with the people that are on the other side to kind of come in and 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 get employed. And actually, on April 11th, we're doing a, an employment webinar, two hours starting at 10, part of our innovation series. And um, folks from the Cuyahoga County Board of Workforce Development are going to be on talking about how they do their work. So I'm going to put in the chat the um, link. It's a free, um, um, actually, it's a six webinar series um, happening through April and May, and it's on April 11th that it's about employment. So I'll, I'll put that in the chat so you guys, if you're interested, can kind of um, chime in on that one if you want. I think it's next slide and Keith, you're up. Okay. Well, um, I, I don't know if you guys have heard of charting the life course, but basically it's just a format, a, a series of tools that help you with planning, help people with planning. So it's outside of systems planning and it's owned by the person and the family that are kind of um, using it to kind of communicate what they want to have happen in, 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 in people's lives. You can go on to the next one if you want to, Anne. So one of the tools involved in that charting the life course framework is something that I use a lot and I think a lot of people do. It's called an integrated support star. And you can use it in a variety of ways. But if you're looking at employment, it's really a, a, um, a way to kind of gather together information about somebody that might be um, interested in looking at getting a job or having some experiences, some vocational experiences. And what you do is you just do an inventory of all the resources and um, kind of opportunities available to the person already. So you just you know slap that guy's name in the middle of the star, the integrated star, and you look around these boxes, these categories, um, technology, the person's strengths and assets, relationships the person has, um, connection to community-based supports, and then um, connection to eligibility-specific supports. And as you do this, you start building this kind of um, like an inventory of all the stuff that maybe you take for granted, but if you slow it down, you start thinking about how could this be used to help this person enter the workforce? And you start thinking, here's all these strengths and assets this person's had. That's that's going to be the beginning of a resume, right? Here's his um, his or her connection to technology that might yield some kind of vocational goal or so some kind of vocational vision. Here's all the services that um, the person can access based on the, um, his his or her um, desire to get a job. And there's all kinds of supports. I think Vanessa mentioned Ohio Means Jobs and other kind of organizations that aren't based in eligibility as much as just um, helping people who are unemployed connect to the workforce. So you could put those down. Then you um, can go up there and look at relationships. Who do I know that who does this person know or who does mom and dad know that might be able to help Connor or, or whoever move into the workforce? You might know um, business owners. You might have a neighbor that owns a, a, a coffee shop. It just You just put that down, right? And then last, you put in the eligibility specific services like the ones from D, from county boards or from OOD or from any of the other um, SSI or SSDI. You, and by the end of this like process, you have a pretty good be, um, beginning of a roadmap to kind of move into um, looking at where the person might be successful. Next one. And you can take um, charting the life course and and in a bigger format, kind of envision what um, that job or that employment looks like. So you can use the tool. This is a, a visioning tool that kind of can begin the process like Peyton is um, 13, right? What are your vision? What's the family's vision of this person's good life? And you can kind of list that out and probably more than likely a job is going to be a part of that. And then you can put down on the, this box below dislikes, what, what doesn't work, right? And then you kind of move back from that vision and from that um, idea of what doesn't work into um, things that happened in the past that helped him get closer to the good life goals, things I wish my family member, I want the, my family member to work on. And you just list it out. And at the end of this process, again, you have a trajectory, which is one of the, I'm trying the life course terms that's used a lot. You have a, a, a kind of a, an arc to, to move toward to kind of make some things happen that if you didn't sit down and think it out and plot it out, it would just kind of be kind of overwhelming. But using these kind of real simple tools to kind of map it out and talk about it and write it down, you can communicate, um, families can communicate, people can communicate to OOD, to school, to us at DD, 
to other systems and other people, um, this is really what we want to make happen. And how can you help me do that? Um, I mentioned Ohio Employment First website. It's chock full of really incredible um, um, tools and, and, and resources just to kind of think about all the ways that you can plan and, and move forward in um, making sure that um, getting a job at the end of school or getting whatever training you need to get a job at the end of school is, is always going to be a part of the conversation. So um, whenever you get a chance, you can um, kind of click on that and go toward there and just go, go through a variety of different um, resources and uh, that are available there. This is one of the um, best tools that's on the Employment First website. It basically, um, I wanted to kind of, can, can you click on that and we can go there, um, Ann? Perfect. This is a case study, right, about um, Kesha's path to community employment. I'm not going to read everything to you, but it gives you this really good format to, to um, kind of put into, uh, put down on paper this um, kind of like path to community employment that you can kind of replicate, right? So all the things that are important to the conversation are here in this document. You can move on down if you want to, like family support, like um, the, the transition assessment, all the all the information you need to make sure that um, we're, we're covering what we need to cover to get mo um, forward movement. And then you get to the um, post-secondary goals that would inform the transition plan, right? You get all the stuff in one place where um, you can kind of look at Kesha's um, path to employment and kind of use that as the as a way to plan forward. And then this gives you, a, again, another kind of trajectory toward um, you know, what she's going to do um, as she enters high school, gets through middle school, enters high school, and then after graduation. And again, it's this is available in, um, to um, download, and you could do this for anybody. And it just gives you this way to kind of look at all the system stuff, like OOD, like um, job and family services, all the stuff that kind of um, is out there. You can kind of put it into one place to kind of make sure all the bases are covered. And this walks you through the actual story of a person, um, Kesha, that's really cool. Thank you, Ann. I think we already so, mentioned this. Sorry, good. Go ahead, Vanessa. They sort of mentioning like there's a theme. We're starting at that very beginning and kind of, you know, starting the car and then we're, we're heading to Disneyland um, <laughs> or Disney World if you have a preference. So um, with that piece, I... I think most of you guys are probably familiar with Ohio Means Jobs, especially um, the student um, piece of it where they have the backpack, they have assessments um, and career inventories. This isn't going to be for every student just because of the way it's kind of developed, but um, for those that can use it, it is definitely one of those things that can help kind of identify some um, aspects of things they might like or dislike and some possible um, career um, trajectories. Next slide. And then, of course, we all know there are resources everywhere, all over the internet, and it's really hard to find them all in one spot. So with that in mind, um, some groups have been trying to, to bridge that and bring them all together under one umbrella. Um, this is Warren County uh, Transition Network. This is one, uh, one workaround for that where they have all of the various agencies. They have um, a lot of different resources all available for not only um, us as agencies and providers, but also for the, the teachers, parents, students, um, and anybody who's supporting these individuals as they move on um, through high school and into the, into the working world. Uh, next slide. Uh, some more navigation tools. So again, lots of various things out there for you to use to kind of help, um, I guess, make that path happen. Um, Hamilton County DDS Live Finder, same concept with a lot of different um, agencies and different resources available to kind of help bridge any gaps that might be happening in that student's life. Um, Career Pathways Toolkit um, over on the OOD website. 
this kind of breaks them down into job clusters. So seeing, okay, what, what's kind of involved with this group of jobs and this group of jobs and um, the career navigator from the governor, governor's office of workforce transformation, they kind of do that same concept, but they also bring a little more um, of the legislation piece in um, WIOA, um, different grants available, things like that to kind of give you a full um, resource. And I just forgot to mention that pretty much most of these pictures, if there's a website behind it, it is hyperlinked. So you can just click on it and, um, and explore to heart's content there. Um, but that's just some of the different options. I, there, there are so many that it would be a, a lot longer than an hour to get through. Um, so we're giving you some key ones to get you started on that. Uh, next slide. Uh, so we have skills to pay the bills. You guys might have heard of this from summer youth. Um, this is a pretty popular um, set of instruction um, from the Department of Labor that's used during our summer youth work experiences. And it's really what's going to make you successful in the workplace. It's those soft skills. Um, clocking in on time, your interpersonal skills, you know, good hygiene, kind of these take you through all those building blocks of what makes you a strong employee, what makes you a good candidate for, for a position. Um, next slide. And this one's fantastic. So Ohio DB 101, um, this is fantastic. We do have um, certified individuals that can do work incentives planning. Um, but if you have parents that are a little hesitant um, to, to get their kid out there, get them um, trying out jobs because they're afraid they'll lose their social security benefits, this is a great place to go because you can enter in some numbers. You can run so many different scenarios to see what does working look like when it's used in conjunction with social security benefits, and it can help ease the parents' fears. Um, there's always that concern that they might lose their benefits and it took so long to get there. So yes, definitely the fear factor piece. And that sometimes when you're working with parents, you see that frequently, they're just afraid of losing that, that safety. Um, so this can definitely help as a, as a first step to kind of ease that fear and say, you know what, it's going to be okay. And here's what's in place for that. Um, and then as we progress, doing one that's very um, specific to their situation at that time, and we can get a, a certified work incentive planner working through that with them. I just, I put in chat, uh, Vanessa, like Jeannie Hall from one of the um, work incentives um, counselors at um, OOD is a part of these trainings we do called Fear Factor. We started doing about a year or two ago where we just got together um, work incentives work incentives professionals from across Ohio, just to kind of walk families, case managers, everybody, teachers, anybody that wants to tune in, we um, walk through like, what, what does it mean if you have SSI in work? What is Medicaid buy-in? How to, all, all the stuff that you're, um, that's very complicated and kind of makes you afraid. We um, kind of dive into it for an hour and a half. And we're, um, um, we, at that link, you can go to the six archived episodes that we've already done with resources connected to those. And we're getting ready to do one in June around uh, Medicaid buy-in. So I thought I'd just put that in the mix. Absolutely, thank you so much. Yeah, I think that just by addressing those fears um, do a huge a huge service for, for the family and for the, the student to be able to move forward um, and really explore various vocational options. Next slide. You want me to do this one? Yes, please. Okay. This is um, Ocali. We partner with them a lot. I mean, you guys are probably familiar with them. And this is a link to their transition page, which basically it walks you through, again, a wide variety of tools and frameworks to kind of, that you can, you know, choose based on what you're thinking about to kind of um, move into um, helping people figure out what they want to do when they are um, transitioning out of school. I want to point to what works for work, um, which is evidence-based transition practices and predictors. It's really um, worth your time to look at the best way to make um, the situation successful. It gives you a lot of tips on ev everything that from, you know, work, um, like real work experiences, 
um, figuring out the best way to move into um, helping people figure out what they want to do, uh, transition planning, all that kind of stuff. That's a really good one to kind of go to. This one also is on the Ocali website. And one of the biggest, um, best ways to figure out what somebody wants to do is, is helping them to discover what they're interested in. And this kind of walks you through what discovery is and what customized employment can be. And usually customized employment, which is a way to help people that maybe have complex or, or some kind of significant need that, um, and they can't just go into a, to the workforce in a traditional way. You have to figure it out through other means is you help them kind of figure out what they are interested in and what they're possibly good at. And you try to develop a condition, these conditions for success that are kind of outside of vocational goals, but also eventually become vocational goals and interests. So a discovery process is just basically when is the person at their best and what are they doing and when they're at their best, what are they interested in? And then taking all that and not just being focused completely on work, but taking that information and kind of applying it to where they might be able to enter the workforce. And so this walks you through that process of kind of figuring out a really good discovery process for folks. This is um, a self-guided discovery um, guide that um, is offered, offered through the LEAD Center, which basically is, um, you could use families and, and individuals can use this to kind of develop their own discovery process and kind of at home or out in the community or wherever they're at. Again, noting what they're interested in, noting what they're good at, noting when they're, they're, they're at their peak, when, they're, when the conditions for success are at their peak and having that written down so that you can contribute to um, job development in ways that aren't just about filling out an application, but actually trying to make a good match that'll um, hopefully sustain. Another, another version of this is on our EF website. Um, again, career discovery and trying to figure out the best way to kind of um, inventory and jot down and figure out what the person is good at, what experiences they've had toward figuring out where they fit in the workforce and kind of ensuring that that gets into the conversation as you um, make a transition plan. And this is also on the EF website. Really great. Um, job seekers guide which has eight modules that just walks you through everything we're talking about today only specific to people that are um, going to be um, receiving support so this job seeker guide these modules are really really easy to access and they kind of just again walk you through the process of what what pat what place am i on the path to employment what do i need to do to connect to the system what can i do, how can i communicate what i want what i'm interested in all that's in that job seekers guide and we have a link here to all the resources that we've kind of pulled together on our website at DODD around um, employment, um, all the links that we kind of have um, peppered out throughout the, um, this um, PowerPoint, but other stuff that's interesting that you can kind of delve into in one place. Real quick, I've got one more, I got three slides that didn't get into that slide deck that I wanted to put up and then I'll shut up, I swear. So. I'm going to share my screen here, if that's okay, Ann. If I can find the right one. I had a, I had a few slides that I didn't get to put into the, um, the, the slide deck that they had up there. So um, basically, I, I went through and I jotted down some and put a link in for a few other things that I, I wanted to cover real quick. Um, this is a really good um, guide that you can go to um, on this dual customer approach that I was kind of talking about um, up top, where if you're trying to work with businesses to support people with developmental disabilities to have work experiences or to have jobs, the best way, one of the best ways is to have this dual customer approach where you're kind of looking at businesses, not just to, uh, not just to support the people you're supporting, but to figure out how you can support them, that you have a resource that may be able to support them. So you go to the business and you ask about what their needs are before you start talking about the needs of the people that you're supporting. And then you kind of go back to your crew of folks that you're supporting and you figure out where they might benefit from this, these relationships you're making with businesses. And this guide walks you through that process. And it's um, 
really um, an interesting read and it's through um, Ask Earn, which is like a really good organization that you can check into when you get a chance. And I'll, I'll put these slide, this slide deck in the, in the chat for you. And this is from the Department of Labor's Office of Disability, Disability Employment Policy. I think there was a question I saw somewhere um, about when to disclose disabilities to employers. And this kind of um, walks folks through a process of should I or shouldn't I disclose my disability? And it's really um, well researched and, and um, a good um, kind of resource. And this is the last one. Um, sometimes I think folks have questions around unpaid work experiences, volunteering and internships for, for students as they're transitioning out. So this is a uh, I think it's a four page for, from the um, self from the um, supported employment leadership network that just walks you through best practices and rules and regs while supporting folks with DD to get experiences to learn about work. So that's those slides and I will now stop sharing and I'll put the this deck into the um, chat. So are there any questions that we can answer for you guys? It's a lot of information. I even added more to it. I'm sorry, Vanessa. Like I had to have my own little slide deck. Lord have mercy. So anyway. So I have a question. I might have missed this. And if I did, I apologize. Um, but when when the teachers are or supervisors are working to get businesses on board, can they work with you to help businesses understand, you know, how to um, like Mason, how to welcome Mason in and kind of, um, I don't want to, I'm losing my train of thought, but maybe like kind of go with the flow, you know, and not remember that their kids still, especially the kids we're talking about in K-12, that they're still learning. They, and especially with COVID, they might not have had some experiences. And so we want them to get these hands-on experiences, but we want to make sure they're learning as well and not to just kind of be like, no, 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 we can't do that. I think I was trying to get at that through that dual customer approach, because I think the best way to look at it is um, if you go to the business and say, we have kids with disabilities, they're going to freak out, right? So you kind of go, what needs do you have as a business? And you kind of walk with the business person through what they need. And then in the back of your mind, you're thinking, here are some kids that could benefit from this and they, and they might be able to do this. And you, and you introduce the concept with that idea of like, you're going to help the business and they're going to help you. If you go at it like, oh, they, you may have some trouble with these kids, it probably wouldn't work. So you have to develop a relationship with the business. I, I have an example, like back in the day, I would um, I worked with a place called um, TKB, which makes um, shocks in Hamilton, Ohio. And we kind of started with um, just a tour of their place and then kind of figured out there might be a few people that would benefit from working in their logistics. And then we built a relationship and, and it's, it's gone on, far beyond what I started so that now there's a project life um, kind of um, rotation there. There's people who are be who have been employed who are um, labeled um, developmentally disabled. So, but it starts with getting to know the business first, building a relationship and then kind of slowly introducing folks into that culture that can do what they can do and then if there are issues, you have that relationship to light, fall back on and not just, you know, you asking them to help you, but you helping them and them helping you. And that that kind of re that reciprocation really helps when you're getting through the struggles because there are going to be struggles. Right. But it really does start with you're interested in helping the business so they can help you, not just they help you, but you it's 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 a, you know, a give and a take. It's a two way street. And I think that part of that is when you say that relationship piece, obviously they know people as well. And so sometimes in, and especially in sometimes smaller communities, they'll start to talk to each other and then it becomes a little easier to get that foot in the door. Um, but Keith was spot on with that one. And I know that that's been how, 
that's that's been how we've kind of approached it as far as our employer partner list is what do you need let's see if we can you know find some people that will meet that need and then kind of proven ourselves that, that way so now that they know that when we're sending somebody forward it's it's because that person has the skills to get the job they just also happen to have a disability and if there are like issues that happen and they are going to happen because it's just the way the world works you have again a, a conversation already ongoing and, and a trust that can help you move through things because there are going to be sometimes mistakes made or things happen right so but if you don't have that relationship at the beginning that that dissolves every possibility but if you do start with that connection and that conversation it can get you through some stuff does anybody else have other questions for our group for Vanessa Keith Ann I was, um, th my name is Sandra McIntosh, and I was just wondering, um, I'm a middle school intervention specialist, and I, I guess I just didn't know how to even get started. Like, how do you know what businesses to reach out to? Or like, like, did you send letters out and then they just reached? I mean, I- That's a great question. I mean, I, I, the way I, I started is I went, I would- um, you do some cold calling, you go out. I, I one time I was at a, um, I forget where, I think it was at a restaurant or something. And I just started talking to the manager about, I mean, so you're always thinking like that, but also I would go to chamber of commerce. I'd go to where businesses hang out. I, I would, um, ask friends. I'd be at a, you know, a, um, out with friends and that we'd be talking. I mean, there's all kinds of different avenues to take, but the beginning of it is just, I jotted down a list of the people's interests that I was working for. And I just started thinking about businesses that might be able to kind of help them figure out if they really are um, interested and can do it. So I think also you could reach out to um, um, Anne, me or, or Vanessa, if you want some support, because I know Anne has a community of practice where there are job developers and, and employment navigators that get together monthly and they kind of talk about businesses and, and how to engage them. You could go to Ohio Means Jobs. You, I went to job fairs and Ohio Means Jobs has a lot of them where for people, you know, just to come in and 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 do their applications. I would go to job fairs as a, an employment um, services spec just to kind of talk shop with them and and not because I had anybody with me, but just to get to know people and get their cards and then, you know, kind of give them a call saying, I saw you at the job fair and I would like to come out and, and talk to you. I, I mean, it's just a wide variety of, of ways to make a, a relationship start with them, with the idea that eventually you may be able to match some folks, some kids, some students that you're working with, with experiences there because you started talking to them and and develop that kind of conversation about it. Does that make sense? A little bit. Yes, yes, thank you. That's very yeah. helpful. It's just the it's just the hard part of just trying to get started, I think. Yeah, it is. It's and I think it, I think joining in like with um other people <laughs> kind of helps. So again, if you're interested, I think Anne has like that um, community of practice. And I know that Vanessa has um, a whole unit of people that do business engagement and they have opportunities for stuff too. So, but I would start by going to, if you ever get a, get a chance, go to a job fair and just hang out there and, and just kind of, you know, start introducing yourself to folks. Anybody else? I know Ann said she'd love to hear some of the examples of relationships um, that have already been developed, any success stories out there. I would have called on Aaron, but I think he had to leave because I know he's been working this year to build some relationships in Cincinnati. It becomes addictive. When I did it back in the day, I would 
um, I started with a couple places and then I, I it becomes like a, like a, you're a salesperson for um, figuring out places that would kind of meet your, your, what your match up to the interests of the people you're supporting. So once you get started, it, it, it does become like you start understanding that businesses aren't um, against you They're They really do need your help. And if you can figure that out, it can, becomes easier and easier to do cold calls and to do the asking. Cause I, I never had anybody slam a door in my face or anything. It was just, you just got to keep pursuing it. I had people ignore me. Right. But, <laughs> but that's, you know, that's the way it is. And I think I'm, I'm, I'm making an assumption here and I know what can happen when you do that, but um, I think sometimes it's hard for the teachers to be able to get out to do some of these things. So if there's someone else in the district that is working on work-based learning or that they can partner with to help um, so that maybe they can take, um, like you said, the interest the kids have, um, but they can you know, kind of shop around too for some businesses that might be interested. Um, it definitely takes the village. It's not a, it's not a one person show um, to get going. No, that's why I keep pushing the fact that if you talk to OOD, you talk to your county board folks, you talk to internal folks, there, there'll be a way to get more of this work done, but it's not going to be probably done by one person. It's going to be shared. You're right. Otherwise, you're just, it's just too much. So yeah, figuring out how to make sure that you have um, connections to other organizations beyond school that are doing the same kind of stuff and kind of ride in their way would be good too. Yeah, and if anybody on the call needs, you know, who, a name of someone to connect with, with OOD in their, in their area, um, reach out to, to me or to Keith or Vanessa, and, and I'll make sure you have their information, and we can get you connected to the right person, um, because I know there are people on the call from the Dayton area and Cincinnati, so um, we'll make sure that you um, get the right person. All right, if you don't have um, any other questions, let me put, I should have already done this, but let me put the um, the feedback link in the chat so that you can get um, your uh, certificate. I know last time I had an issue with it, but this time it's all working. And then once you complete this, you'll be able to get um, your certificate right away. And then I'll preview our next session. Um, our next session in two weeks is with Kayla Mickens um, from the Department of Education. And she's gonna talk to us about our career advising policies. And I might also be able to give her, have her give us an update on Ohio Means Jobs because that system is gonna have some updates here in the very near future and want to make sure that you are all aware of them um, going into this late spring and then be certainly before school starts. So um, hope you'll come back for that session in two weeks. And again, I always record them. So if you missed it, um, I'll send out the information. So thank you so much um, to Anne, Vanessa, and Keith. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and um, like you said, just getting started, this gives some people some ideas to get started about how to find those work-based learning sites for our students that have um, some different needs and um, get them on the path to work. So um, thanks everybody for joining us and I'll stick around if you have a question, um, but have a great afternoon and stay safe in our weird weather tomorrow. Um, and uh, hopefully spring's definitely here now. Have a great day. Thank you.